Good evening, my lord. Very well. Oh, my lord, we were just, uh... Well, uh, well, the treasury's safe. I'm not even sure why the Tern Station does here. I don't know. Nobody has come to look at the treasury. The Tern, and perhaps the Tanner? I honestly don't know, my lord. Yes, my lord. Thank you, my lord. Good evening, my lord. There you are. Your mother told me the Tern had summoned you, so I didn't want to interrupt. Yes, I saw the Isle arrive. I fear your hound has the kitchens in uproar once again, and is threatening to leave. Your mother disagrees. She insists you collect the dog, and quickly. You know these Mabari hounds. They listen only to their master. Anyone else risks having an arm bitten off. I'm not willing to test that. You're quite lucky to have your own Mabari Warhound, you know. Smart enough not to talk, my father used to say. Of course, that means he's easily bored. Nan swears he confounds her just to amuse himself. At any rate, your mother would have me accompany you until the matter is settled, shall we? She was entertaining Lady Landra and her son when I left her. Perhaps in the atrium? Uh, before we go, my lord, might I beg a question? I've heard from several people that a Grey Warden is here. Is that true? Then, is it also true that this Grey Warden was asking after me? Maker's breath, are you certain? Can you imagine me, a Grey Warden? It would be everything I've dreamed of. Of course, I shouldn't get ahead of myself. Pardon my outburst. Good evening, my lord. Good evening, my lord. Bloody mutt out of the larder. But, mistress, it won't let us near. If I can't get into that larder, I'll skin both of you useless elves. I swear it. Uh, calm down, good woman. We've come to help. You and you. Your bloody mongrel keeps getting into my larder. That beast should be put down. A blight wolf is what he is. How am I supposed to work like this? Oh, dear. Mistress, calm down, please. That's it. I'll quit. Inform the turner. I'll go and cook at some nice estate in the Banorn. Nan, please. We'll get the dog. Calm down. Just get him gone. I've enough to worry about with a castle full of hungry soldiers. You two, stop standing there like idiots. Get out of the way. Oh, look at that mess. How did he even get in here? <coughs> it does seem like he's trying to tell you something. Wait, did you hear that?
Wild creature. <laughs> Giant rats? It's like the start of every bad adventure tale my grandfather used to tell. Your hound must have chased them in through their holes. Looks like he wasn't raiding the larder after all. I've seen larger. They come up from the Kakari wilds sometimes. But seeing as you've got your Mabari well in hand, I'll be on my way. I'm to prepare for the arrival of more of the Isle's men. It is begun. There he is, as brazen as you please, licking his chops after helping himself to the roast, no doubt. Look at him now. Snuck into my larder once again and makes off like a free thief, he does. Oh, mistress, there are rats in the larder. Big ones. Oh, looks like the dog killed them. Oh, I bet that dog led those rats into there to begin with. Oh, don't even start with the sad eyes. I'm immune to your so-called charms. Here, then. Take these pork bits and don't say that Nan never gives you anything. Bloody dog. Thank you, my lord. Now we can get to work. That's right, you two. Quit standing about. Thank you again for your help. Now, if you'll just hold on a moment. Yes? Adney, get moving with those casts. And Kath, do you think you can serve that to the turn with dirt from the floor all over it? Miserable old bat. Old bat, am I? We've got to work double time on supper. Sweep out the hearths and no complaining. Don't even mention that. These two will run like a pair of frightened kittens, and then where will I be? Thank you for coming to your old nanny's rescue. That blasted hound is more trouble than he's worth. He is. And don't start with me. You've gotten all you're getting today. But what about you, my lord? Been keeping safe and well behaved, I hope. Good. I'm not exactly privy to your goings-on now that you're grown. Just an old nanny, never invited to your father's fancy meetings. Do you remember that bedtime tale I used to tell you? The dog that bit? Good. Then you can start. A warhound was born to the elder bitch of a tribal chief. They named him Hahaku and gave him everything. He grew up a fine, strong pup, destined to be the partner of the chief's eldest son. The young hound became arrogant, taking food from his kin and warning them, in the way of dogs, that the chief's family would punish them if they tried to attack him. Years passed, and the time for the chief's son to take a warhound came closer. Hahaku's pride swelled, and many of the people of the tribe came to the chief, quietly whispering of this dog's bullying. With each complaint, the chief saw only Hahaku's strength and pride, and sent his people away. But as his son grew, the chief watched more closely. The day might come when his boy's life would depend on this dog. If the humblest of his people would not trust Hahaku, how could he? When the day came, Hahaku sat proudly waiting to be called. But the old chief chose Hahaku's brother as his son's hound, 
Hahaku was shamed, but felt no remorse. So great was his rage that he darted across the fire pit and bit the chief's hand. The chief and his son struck at Hahaku, cursing him. The hound ran into the village, seeking shelter in the tents and kennels. The other dogs snapped at him, and the tribe's people threw stones at him. Before the chief could reach him, the tribe had torn Hahaku apart. Now, what should you carry from this tale? Exactly. Hahaku took advantage of a position he thought he was entitled to. But you're far too old now for an old woman to be reminding you to watch how you behave, hmm? It's a story worth repeating. That's all. Be off with you then. Tell your brother farewell before he rides off to war. We will serve you while the Terran is away. The Terran and the Arl are supposed to leave before dawn. It'll be a long night. And my dear Bryce bought this pack from Orlais last year. The Marquis who gave it to him was drunk, I understand, and mistook Bryce for the king. Ah, here is my younger son. I take it by the presence of that troublesome hound of yours that the situation in the kitchen is handled? You've always had a way with her. Darling, you remember Lady Landra, Ban Lawrence's wife? I think we last met at your mother's spring salon. You're too kind, dear boy. Didn't I spend half the salon shamelessly flirting with you? Right in front of your family, too. You remember my son, Dyron. I believe you two sparred in the last tourney. And you beat me handily, as I recall. It's good to see you again, my lord. And this is my lady-in-waiting, Iona. Do you say something, dear? It is a great honor, my lord. I have heard many wonderful things about you. Don't look now, Eleanor. But I believe the girl has a crush on your lad. Lady Landra! Hush, Landra. You'll turn the poor thing scarlet. As it pleases you, my lord. I think perhaps I shall rest now, my dear. Dyron, I will see you and Iona at supper. Perhaps we'll retire to the study for now. Good evening, your lordship. You should say goodbye to Fergus while you have the chance. Yes, your father mentioned that. You haven't got it into your head that you want to be recruited. There's enough here at the castle to occupy you. I don't need you off chasing danger like your brother. If he's not out with his men, probably upstairs with Oriana. I know it's difficult to stay in the castle and watch others ride off, but we must see to our duties first. You understand that, don't you? You are here. Trust me, you'll get your chance for excitement soon enough. For a few days, then I'll travel with Lady Landra to her estate and keep her company for a time. Your father thinks my presence here might undermine your authority. Don't worry, my dear. It won't be long. As do I. Your father and brother are marching off to fight the Maker knows what. All the assurances in the world don't comfort me. But it wouldn't help for us to take up arms and follow. Fergus and your father have their duty, and we have ours. I love you, my darling boy. 
You know that, don't you? Go do what you must then. I will see you soon. Hello, my dear boy. By chance, I am beginning to teach these young squires about your family's history. Uh, do we have to? History is boring. Boys, you are referring to the Kuslans, the very family in whose castle you live? Show some respect. If the mind is not exercised, it withers just as the body does. Perhaps you'd care to join me in teaching the lesson? Perhaps you could make the topic more palatable for these lads and their minuscule intellects. Wonderful. Oh, the Kuzland history is long indeed. Where shall we start? Well, records are vague, but the Kuzlands became Tyrns during the Black Age. Is that familiar, child? Every day I pray to the Maker that my lessons will stick, and every day he tasks me anew. At that time, your family held only the minor title of Ban. When the werewolves reached this area, Ban Mather Kusland organized a curfew and patrols within the city. Several other local bands supported his efforts by swearing oaths of fealty, making him their turn. Well, I'm glad some of my lessons don't disappear into that yawning chasm between your ears, young man. It seems you've already plumbed the depths of your potential then. A pity. At any rate, your family has held the tourneur of High Ever since before King Callan had united Ferelden. In fact, Tierna Elethea Kuslan battled Callan had to maintain High Ever's independence. Well, the Kuslans are ardent royalists now, but at that time, Kalanhad was unknown and considered dangerous by many. When Kalanhad's army reached High Ever, Tierna Elethea led the local bands against him. Obviously, Kalanhad won. Kalanhad wished to unite Ferelden, not conquer it. After Elethea's men were defeated, Kalanhad asked her to swear fealty. The boulder where they held council still stands today as a memorial of that event. The history between the Kuslans and the House reaches back to the Orlesian occupation. During your grandfather's rule, of course Orlay found it difficult to hold these lands. During the rebellion against Orlay, several battles were fought near High Ever. The port village of Harpers Ford was the Turnier's center. Its arl was Tarleton Howe. Though nearly 90, he was still as sharp and bitter as cheap ale. Your grandfather openly supported the rebellion, but Howe sided with Orlay. Your family was forced to seize Harpers Ford before it was all over. The Howes eventually joined the rebellion when all of Ferelden united behind King Merrick and General Loghain. Just as now we united behind Merrick's son, King Caelan, to fight the Darkspawn. Thank you for indulging an old man. Oh, does that mean we have to listen to you now? Silence! I will not have you two becoming smart-mouthed hooligans. But perhaps you should go. I doubt they need any more distraction. 
I'm just going to settle in here and apparently just talk to myself for all the good I'm doing. Don't let myself all this while to you talk this way. Mother says the darkspawn will all be killed and I won't see one. Is that true? Good evening, my lord. Are you marching off to war, too? I wish I was old enough to fight. <laughs> 